Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms, my name is Stuart and welcome to a quick flick through and sort of review of Black Seas Hold Fast, which is a very recent supplement um, by Warlord Games for their Black Seas um, naval combat game, um, 1770 to 1830. That's the sort of the general period that the game covers. Um, so regular followers of the channel will know that I've recently dipped my toe into the game, having owned the starter box for a little while, but not doing much more than flick through it. I uh, I, I saw a few videos online and I saw some posts from, from, from other people and I noticed this had been released and it kind of triggered me back into the into the game and actually got me doing something with it rather than uh, rather than just letting it collect dust on the shelf it was always a I'll do that one day when I've got a little bit of time kind of thing um, so if you um, if you know if you haven't come across the channel before there are a couple of other videos that I have done I've done a project vlog I like to do vlogs for all of my ongoing projects and a bit of a kind of an overview flick through also if you might be handy if you are um, new to the game yourself or unsure what the game is and I'll pop links to those in at the end of the video but what is this book what is it so it is a supplement for their black seas game it's not a game in itself so you will need a copy of the core game um the master and commander starter set is, is probably the most um e easiest way to get into the game you get ships and everything you need in the box to play the game um but i'm not reviewing that here today so this book um it's a bit of a mixture of old and new rules some of the old rules as far as i can tell are things that had been released in the you know in the groups or as pdfs on the website for a while and it's combined and compiled some of those things together and there's lots of new rules as well there are additional scenarios there are narrative themes there's an expanded um, navies including a lots of work on the u.s navy and um, there's rules of pirates um, some other additional rules rules for some new ships rules from solo games which is one of the things that really attracted me and made me think about um actually picking up the game um, and there's also a couple of campaigns in there as well so there's, there's quite a lot of stuff but what we'll do is we'll have a quick flick through the book and we'll, we'll discuss in a little bit more detail the kind of stuff that you hope to see in there so let's get stuck into the book so it's a softback book um, we're looking at 96 pages or so in total um, full colour, very nicely presented and, and fairly easy to follow. Um, so lots of nice artwork inside of, um, I believe they're ships from the, the studio collection and I'm sure there's other people who have contributed as well. Um, lots of really nice pictures, very cleverly made their mats wave a little bit here. And it's just, just some really, really nice effects um, and some lovely artwork. So if you're like most miniature war gamers out there, pictures of, of beautifully painted miniatures looking cool is always nice. Um, a good contents, so there is an index as well, which is always handy. Um, little introduction from Gabriel that sort of says what the, the book's about really. And then we get straight into it. So we have Smuggler's Run, um, which is a campaign system um, where you're playing as a, basically as a, as a smuggler gang, which is quite cool. Um, it talks about whether you can use it as a, as a sort of a campaign or a, or a tournament campaign. Um, I think you can work both ways. Um, you can play it in a series of games, etc. So you've got your... Uh, campaign objectives and uh, creating a smuggling company, um, it, your costs of your, your ships and things. Um, it's really fun, really, really cool. Um, it um, adds a little bit more flavor. I'm quite a narratively focused gamer as it is. Um, maybe it's just because I'm not very good at games and I, uh, I lose all the time, but that's why it's my excuse. But uh, the actual process of, of playing a um, sort of a, more of a narrative game really sort of attracts me. Um, the only problem with campaigns is sometimes it's just getting people to, to finish them, um, especially if you play it at a club or something like that. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's a quite detailed idea for the campaign. I'm not going to read out the rules to you. That's not the idea of the flick through, really. Um, I just wanted to draw attention to each element of the book. Um, I've had a flick through and it does look pretty good. Um, and it's a, definitely a very different way to play the game rather than just sort of the naval battle approach. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's fairly detailed, lots of charts and things, and I can imagine that it'd uh, be really good fun to have a game. And here are the, um, the scenarios for it as well. Um, they start quite basic. Um, there's three of them. 
And then you've got your sort of second campaign system. Um, so you're, you're left and to um, Admiral, and it's basically, um, it's talked about as, a, as a, almost as a, a recommended to play it as a tournament um, over a short period. Uh, but, you know, reading it through, I think it could be playing, played quite slowly as a slow grow thing as well at a club or, a, or at home. But you're basically, you're starting with a smaller ship and as you progress through the rounds, so the turns, the turns are actually like tournament rounds, as you progress through the rounds, you gain control of more ships and a, and a higher ship, so to speak. Um, but I think it's set up to play as an event um, and you could, um, you know, you, your, your first round, everyone will be playing um, one chip on one chip in a smaller game and, and it slowly grows as you go through it. Um, and But you do get tournament points, so you could run it as a Swiss system. So I really like it. I think it's, um, I don't think it needs to be played as a tournament. You can definitely play it as a, as a, as a slow grow style thing. Um, I think as um, if you play it as a slow grow, it might work well at a club. If lots of people, new people, pick up the pick up the game, and they've only got a ship painted at the beginning, they can play the first round, and then you've got a goal for a week or two weeks later to get your next ships painted up to play the second round, and so on. So I think it would work quite well as a slow grow. Um, and then there are lots of new scenarios. Um, Lots of different styles, using fire ships, ones with trades, um, passengers, Bermuda Triangle, um, lots of different fun things, some linked to um, historical, um, with historical context, some not, but really, really cool. I think there's 15 new ones in, in total, um, which, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a massive expansion over what was in the, in the sort of the standard rule book. Then you've got a little bit of history here, um, a bit of a very brief write-up for the, the Battle of the Nile, which is a scenario, and it's really I really like that having whether it's um, land lugging miniatures, sort of black powder or something like that. When you've got um, scenarios for famous engagements, you've got the same thing here, but for for ships, so that's quite cool. Um, some lovely, lovely, lovely full colour um, prints and things. And this is um, some beautiful miniatures of Caribbean islands. Um, it's absolutely stunning stuff. Um, really inspiring to go and, and build some things. And well, I've got a 6x4 table and I've got a 6x4 sea mat. And most of the games I play will only require a smaller playing space. But even when land's not really required for the, for the game, I can imagine having it all up one side of the board just to add a little bit of colour to the table but it, those look fantastic. Um, you've got some more ships and famous people so you've got stats for we've got Thomas Cochrane is the first one there um, he appears in a sharp book among other things very very famous um, personality there so you've added new famous captains and there are a few um, new famous ships as well. So we have HMS Speedy, um, I believe that was one of Cochrane's um, ships. Um, a few more there as well. And then we got French captains of renown and famous ships as well there. More famous ships, Spanish versions. So it's just really, really filling out the game. I think a lot more character to it. And then it starts to expand upon the navies that are already there. So the, the US Navy gets an expansion. There are new ships being released at the moment. There's some nice background history here to start with. And then you've got US Captains of Renown and, and some of their famous ships. And some rules, quite a lot added here as well. So it's really, if, you, if you're a US Navy player or wanted to, that really expands it. And then you end up with other navies. So you've got national rules there for, for Russian Navy and some Russian famous ships and uh, captains um, and the same for the Swedish Navy. So it, it's really kind of expanded the game and, and filled it out beyond the original core rules which is, um, it feels like there's an awful lot in here for the 100, 100 pages that the book is. So Norwegian, um, Dutch, Portuguese, I mean, obviously, some get a lot less than others. It's just one one ship, but it's something. And it's um, any players who wanted to play different nations are not always doing British or, or French um, sort of revolutionary or Napoleonic era um, fighting. That's fantastic. Um, and then we got a little bit of um, talking about fighting in the Mediterranean. And I think as a way of introducing a few more ship types. So you got Barbary Coast pirates. You got galleys and zebecs. Um, 
So more rules for, for the pirates. And again, it's just different ways to play the game and expand upon um, playing Trafalgar refights and things. It's a bit more about the Ottomans and their navy. Um, national rules for them as well. Then it brings you on to solo gaming, and this is one of the bits that really sort of struck out of me and made me think, I'm going to grab the book and grab a couple more ships and actually do this project rather than letting let dust. Um, I don't get a lot of time to get down to the club just because I've got a young family at the moment, so the multitude of games I have when I do get a chance to play face-on-face -face with someone, this may not be the first game I always choose, um, but it might be a game that I play with my son a little bit, but also... It's the kind of game that you're not moving hundreds and hundreds of miniatures. So playing playing small solo scenarios of an evening with a beer or something once the kids are in bed really appeals. Um, and the, the first couple of um, scenarios are very, very easy and don't require many ships. In fact, none of them require many ships because that would, that would be crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, in fact, solo gaming, there's a lot of people out there doing it, um, especially in historical um, gaming. Then there are some new additional rules. Um, I don't know because I'm new to the game how off you know how much of these rules have been played by the community anyway because they were uh, originally um, released in the groups or in FAQs and things. But there are additional rules there. Uh, definitely flavourful, most of them. A sea shanty, <laughs> um, and then a bit of a sort of tidy up at the back with all the ships and into some new tables for references rather than having to flick through to the middle of the book which is good and then terrors of the deep and i'm pretty sure this was a pdf that was out there the miniatures have been available for a while so it adds a bit of a fantastical element to your um, historical game um and i think while not every game will like this and it's not something i'd always go straight to these are all creatures i believe that were um believed at the time by sailors that they were they were in real existence so it's uh it's not necessarily fantasy it's just going along with the mythos of what sailors believed was under the under the waves but uh, they're cool my, my son who's seven um eight this year look likes the look of these and these are one of the solo scenarios as well so i can imagine picking this box up be really fun to paint um, and then maybe just sort of GM and a solo scenario for him and letting him play a little bit and he's definitely interested in playing some pirates um, but there we go you know, there's an even easier way to make a ghost ship and the plastic ships are so cheap you can buy the individual frames this would be incredibly easy to uh, easy to do and they've even rigged it um, but um, good fun and there we are that's, that's the end of the book so all in all, I think it's a really nice supplement. Um, it's well presented, and it seems like there's an awful lot packed in there. If you just look at the page numbers, you think, oh, it's a relatively small one, and I suppose it's not huge. But also, there's there's a lot of different stuff in there for different styles of gamers. Um, it feels, having read the original rules a couple of times, but you know, not really played around much yet, it does feel like they've expanded upon the game, especially with the extra rules and the extra nations expansions and all the, the new ships and things. It does feel like they made the game substantially larger, um, which is which is really good. Um, and they're, both campaigns have got really nice narrative elements to them, and I think they can be played and used in many ways beyond what they're designed for there. Like I mentioned when I was talking about the the admiral to lieutenant to admiral, um, it's it, yes, it's it's a really nice maybe two day six or five round Swiss tournament um, way of playing the game. But you don't need to do it with tournament points; you can do it with campaign points. And it, like I said, it would because you're increasing the number of ships, and as you get promoted, it would make a lovely way, as I said, to do a, a bit of a slow grow league to get people from. Um, their starter sets to have been playable fleets for larger games and if you had a club with you know four five six maybe ten people um even six would be plenty enough as long as you've got even numbers it what a what a great way of um working through and adding more and more ships to your collections you paint your bigger one for the next week etc etc so i think there's lots in the book it's packed full of, of of different styles of play for different people um and yeah i think it's pretty really good i don't come from a background of playing the game since release so i don't know whether there's bits in there that people would have would consider missing so to speak i'm sure there'll be someone out there that says well why isn't this shit's profile or why isn't this personality's profile there um yeah, that's that kind of thing never really never really kind of cuts with me anyway it's not the kind of person i am um but fair enough for people that do feel those things are missing if they are but overall as a, as a new person to it coming up with a very open mind um, it's, this seems like a really, really nice addition to, to the, the rules that are out there.
well i hope that um, video has helped some of you in one way or another um maybe for existing players who were thinking about dusting off their ships and haven't got around to purchasing any of the newer things yet might give you an idea whether it's for you or not or and for people like myself who uh, who haven't really started in the game properly and the the, the supplement actually kind of in, almost inspired along with a few other things to get cracking and get going so hopefully it's helpful in one of those ways to you um let me know what you think of it in the comments do you already have it have you played in the scenarios have you tried the campaigns i'd love to hear what you what your thoughts on it now new to black seas but there are a couple of other videos on the channel if you wanted to check those out um i will pop a little link in there's the uh, it's a bit of an overview really for people that might be new to the period of the game um and then there's the first of my vlogs um talking about what my plans are for the game and, and shows the first ship i've painted etc etc and that will continue as a series um so if that's something that might interest you and you're not already subscribed i fancy giving a sub subscription that would be fantastic um if you did like the video um give us a like it would be brilliant as well really really helps the channel anyway hope you've enjoyed the video thanks very much for watching take care and i'll catch you soon